I'm staring at the ocean. There's some waves. I've got a 6'4 twin fin in the back. Let's, uh, let's help you learn how to read some waves. Oh, there's some dolphin. I'm constantly reassessing my position. Reading waves. It's legit reading energy. Physics, right? It's moving energy through a liquid medium. You're not gonna quick hack this, but I'm gonna give you some tips to help you along in your process. But understand, this is a 10,000 hours kind of thing. You're learning to create mental models, visual representations of understanding, and you have to build on those models over time. So if you don't know, I'm Chris Mills with surfstrengthcoach.com. We're gonna go sit out in the water. I'm gonna give you some things to consider on your next surf because ultimately, the better you can read waves, the more waves you're gonna catch. The better you can read waves, the more quickly you can apply that to any other surf spot in the world. So, uh, Let's learn how to read some waves. And if you really want to do it, come join us on one of our surf trips in Indonesia or Central America. You! 6'4", twin fin. Look at that channel bottom, double concave. Look at that one. Oh, there's some dolphin. Yeah. And on a side note, let's go download the Surf Athlete app. Do it. Do it. Just do it. Come on, movie reference. Somebody out in YouTube land, pick up on the comedy. Go download the Surf Athlete app. Almost forgot the name. Tip number one, always check your nostrils for boogers. If you're filming content for YouTube. Oh, little, there we go. Get accustomed to where you're surfing. I've, oh, actually, that might be a wave. Hold on. Hold on. Now look. The taper of the wall. It's breaking all the way up there. And now I can turn and watch. To see where it broke how long, how far away it broke. So that was an unexpected tip. If you're missing waves or waves are passing by you, always turn around and watch it. Where did it end up breaking? Where was the wall? Where was the taper? Where was the takeoff point? Did the sandbar break nicely along to the right, along to the left? So if you miss waves, turn and look at it. Turn and learn. Woo, turn and learn, that's a run. Tip two. This is a beach break, so the sandbars change, right? I'm constantly reassessing my position. Have I drifted out? Have I drifted in? What's the tide? I'm triangulating my position with objects on land. But most importantly, I've been watching this beach break for like the last two weeks. I know where the banks kind of are. It's really clean and well-groomed today. I understand what the tide is, but I've built familiarity and awareness of this sandbar for multiple sessions now. I actually haven't surfed this. I've been out with a back injury for about the last three and a half weeks and this is the first time back. But the back's feeling good. I occasionally know what I'm doing with rehab. But build familiarity. It's easier with the reef break because there's consistency. This being a beach break, sandbars moving. This break or this sandbar could be gone in a week from now. Maybe a big bunch of swell comes through, wipes it all out. The more time you can spend surfing a break, the better you're going to build awareness, mental models, familiarity with that break. That's a good thing, because the more awareness and familiarity you have, you just understand it better. So that's part of building these mental models. Now look, here comes some energy. There's nothing much here, but there's a lot more over there. So I'm starting to watch where it pulls off the bottom, and now it's starting to draw and it's starting to break. And now I'm watching. 
where? Look, it broke all the way there and all the way there. You need to become an active observer. You're not just going to float around out here being oblivious and start building your awareness, your visual representation of waves. You need to start actually paying attention. Where is it breaking? Where is that good surfer taking off? What does the wave look like? Is that a closeout? Is there opportunity there? Start being an active participant in observing waves. This is, you ain't quick hacking this shit. This whole slogan of three hacks to better surfing. No, surfing is 10,000 hours. Build this process, enjoy the process, become an active observer. So I see a lump way out the back. You probably can't even see it. So I'm just gonna start paying attention. Is something coming? So I see this center of energy is over that way because I see it starting to draw off the bottom. And now it still hasn't really even broken. But I've got this other bit of energy, but there's an apex there. There's kind of an apex here. I'm watching where it's starting to draw off the bottom and it actually broke up there. Now I've seen several waves break up from that direction and be a good right hander. I can look at the whitewash and I see that it's making this V to shore. There's a good right hand sandbar there. So I'm gonna start repositioning. YouTube Froth Lords. Finally, months later, I'm actually back in America. This rest of that video was filmed in Australia when I was still living in Yamba. But as I've gone through and edited it, I need to interject some things. And also the GoPro died. And later this year, I'm gonna be in the Maldives, Nicaragua, back in Indonesia. This is 2022. I can get on airplanes again because I'm living in America. I'm gonna start filming more in the water content. Cool? But I wanted to give you a couple things to think about. One, I'm going to try to like screen share from my iPad and show you curvatures of waves and how to start looking at a wave and determining how the energy is interacting with the bottom contours because it all comes down to positioning. Your ability to read and interpret a wave lets you position yourself to then catch it. It is completely reliant upon your ability to read the energy of the ocean. Cool? Tangent, I just got in the mail today for one of our Nicaragua camps, a Triton Surfscape, Triton by Carver. Things look so good. So one thing I wanna talk about, positioning. I feel like most beginners and a lot of the intermediate spectrum don't seem to understand that you have a 360 degree circumference of your ability to reposition yourself to more effectively put your positioning at the energy epicenter of the wave to more easily catch it. But it's totally predicated upon your ability to read a wave. I see this lump coming in, I can read it, and because of my previous mental models and my ability to basically pattern recognition of, oh, I know what this looks like, I know that this is probably going to break here. I'm going to paddle as hard as I can up that way, five meters, so that I can then turn and easily catch the wave. Or here's this wave coming. Do I need to paddle up that way? Here's this wave coming. Do I need to paddle up and in as hard as I can for 10 meters to then easily catch the wave? Do I need to paddle out? Do I need to paddle in? in any direction with as much intensity or as little intensity as needed to place yourself at the best power zone of that wave to then easily catch it. You see people paddle up, turn in one and two stroke it. Sometimes the reading wasn't as good or you weren't able to position yourself as well as possible, so you have to paddle more intensely and harder. That's fine. but. Think of it, this gets a little more difficult if you're in super crowded lineups, right? But as that wave comes in, you have 360 degrees around you to reposition yourself, to put yourself in a better position to catch the wave. Now, let's see if I can like somehow share my iPad so you can look what I'm looking at and we can talk about wave curves. All about the curves, baby. So the next part of this, right before I start doing my iPad coach's eye screen share, is your understanding of looking at the curvatures of waves. So as you're sitting around floating in the ocean and you're looking out to sea, you see these lumps of energy, 
right? What we're trying to do is infer how is this energy going to interact with the sea floor, whether it's reef, cobblestone point break, sandbar, whatever. Waves are shaped, A, with winds, but also because of the bottom contours of the ocean. So it's all about looking at the curves, the rate of change. This energy is coming in from the ocean and then it hits, let's say this is a reef. Suddenly it hits this reef and it stands up because it's, you know, it's super deep here, this big deep energy coming in. It hits this reef, boom, stands up and breaks. So <clears throat> it's all about how this energy interacts with the ocean floor and that determines the rate of change of that energy. If it's a weak swell period and slow and not very much energy, and it's interacting with this really casual sandbar, it might be the curvature of that wave might just be this kind of slope. And it's just this casual long board, right? It's not this extreme rate of change like pipeline where this energy just comes in or chopu and just the rate of change and the curvature is extreme. Whereas a casual longboard mal wave might just be this casual sloping wave that goes on. It's that rate of change, the curvatures. So what we can do is start analyzing these waves as you're perceiving them and looking at the curvature and the extremes of that curvature, curvature, or lack of extreme. All right, so as a wave comes in, if I see it standing up, right? So it means standing up, it's starting to draw water off of the bottom and really starting to stand up. I'm not looking at the lip knowing that it's about to throw. I'm looking at the draw, the curves off the bottom, All right? So I'm gonna keep talking about draw and curves and rate of change. So as that swell energy comes in, if I see this whole thing standing up in front of me and this really extreme curvature where the energy is interacting with the bottom and all the water is being drawn up the wave face, if it's all over the place, I'm like, this thing's just a big giant closeout in front of me. Where if there's this nice tapered wall of energy and it's starting to stand up here and it's got this nice taper. So here it might be getting quite curvature, the rate of change, the draw off the bottom of the water is more extreme right here, right? And then the curve becomes less extreme and more tapered as it comes down the line. I'm like, that's a sick wave. That's about to be a right-hander. I need to position myself right at the right spot at that curvature rate of change so I can easily catch it and surf down this beautifully tapered line. Those are the things you just need to be aware of. I'm gonna keep saying rate of change, curves, and draw. So draw, let's say again, there's this reef, okay? And this big deep ocean energy is coming in and suddenly it hits this reef. This energy wants to roll forward, but it can't go forward anymore yet because it's just run into this reef. So what it starts doing is sucking all the water up off of that reef and then it throws and breaks. So it's the draw of the water off of the reef or sandbar. That's what I'm talking about. I got this from Clayton Neighbor on one of our coaching trips in Indo ages back. He's trying to get barreled more. He's like, you just need to watch the bottom of the wave. So like when you're trying to get barreled, all I'm looking for is the curves as I'm paddling in. What is that rate of change? What is the draw? How far down the line is it going? Is it going so far that I'm just dropping into a closeout and I'm too deep? Or is it just the right distance because I have these mental models and pattern recognition from looking at waves enough for years and years of knowing, yes, this is the draw. These are the curves I'm looking for. I'm about to get shacked. So draw is the pull of the water off the bottom. Rate of change is how fast it changes. Is it just this nice sloping thing or is it this shallow sandbar super fast and everything between and the curves? Long rant, let's get into me trying to figure out how to share my iPad on a YouTube video. First video, I reckon we're looking at Indonesia right here. And just to remind you, we're talking about draw off the bottom. You can tell what the top of a wave is doing by looking at the bottom. So we're looking at curves, contours, draw. So we see, obviously, we've got some type of 
lump, right? We're starting to see these curves. I'm looking at the curve off the bottom. Now, mind you, if you surf a reef, you get used to how the reef breaks. It's the easiest type of wave to surf because it's predictable. We're now starting to see a quicker rate of change here, right? It's starting to draw a little more and it's more sloped here. So we know this person can probably take off here and it's going to be a left for them, right? Because we're looking at this nice taper. So we can see them get to their feet. What I immediately notice is this is a mostly sloped wave. There's no extreme rate of change. There's no huge draw off the bottom, right? Like if you've ever surfed higher performance reefs, you see this big draw of water off the bottom. This one's pretty chill. But like that looks fun. It's kind of a fatter wave. Cool. Now notice there's still no extreme curvatures. It's still pretty sloped, but I notice it's starting to draw up a little quicker down here. So maybe that wave's about to change down the line a bit. We see the top getting steeper. I know that's going to happen because it's drawing more energy off the bottom and pulling it up the wave face. If more water is being sucked off the reef, it's got to go somewhere. It's going to go up and over. So you can see this part of the wave way more curve than we had here. See, that's just a slope. So now you can see that this is do you see this energy being pulled up the wave? That's what we're looking for. I'm looking at that draw. You can actually start seeing a wave in the back. Do you see how this is more of just a slope over here and it's more of a draw? So it's the curve. There's a quicker rate of change here than here. And this is a quicker rate of change here in the pocket than it is out here. And that wave Still has a bit of stand up to it, but it's starting to fatten out again. Notice there's not as much curvature here. So there's less energy. It's becoming a fatter wave again. And it looks like a totally fun wave. You can see it's more straight, right? It's not throwing as much at the top because it's not drawing as much energy off the bottom. Now, the thing that's good about this video is we actually have this wave out the back. Now notice, We've got a cool little taper. That looks cool. That maybe there's a right hander out there, right? And I've got these curvatures here. Oops, let me get back to my curve. I've got curves here and it's more sloped here. So maybe that wave's gonna break in that direction because the water's drawing off the energy and there's a taper this way. And now I could think, all right, we've got curves going off this way. So maybe there's a left and there seems to be a right. But imagine if I was here and I'm thinking about going to the right, but look at all this curvature, this rate of change, the draw off the reef. If I dropped in right here, I'd be too deep, right? But maybe if I dropped in here, looking to the left, it's right on the screen, but it's a left-hand wave. Look, but it's not very fast rate of change, is it? That's kind of just a fatter, slopier wave. And it kind of just continues to not really stand up. Looking back here, there's no quick rate of change. There's no real big draw off the bottom. Again, you don't need to pay attention to the top of a wave. Pay attention to the bottom. That's where the physics of energy is happening. And whatever's happening at the bottom becomes the top. So you can see it just stays fat. Cool, because I'm looking at the curves. All about the curves, baby. So let's find another video. This is a good one as well. So we can see this lump of energy, right? But notice that curve, it's a bit more prominent here. And here it's just slopier and fatter. And so I'm thinking, oh, maybe this is going to be a right. Again, it's a left on the screen, but if the direction of the surfer, it would be a right. And maybe he needs to change his position to put himself into a good position to catch the wave's energy and surf it in. So he is repositioning. He's using energy to reposition several meters. Now, look, 
Look at the curvature here compared to here. Do you notice there's different draw off the bottom? And yeah, it's standing up. But again, we know what the top's doing because you know what the bottom's doing. And obviously that wave's going this way. The curve is stronger here, less curvature here. And that's probably as the, this energy keeps, the wave energy keeps coming in, this part of the wave is going to stand up further inside. And it does exactly that. Now notice it doesn't have much curves. Notice how it's pretty flat. So it's gonna be kind of a fatter longboard wave, which it is. It never actually really throws, does it? It's more of this crumbling, sloped wave. So then that would kind of dictate how you surf it, where you surf it, and what your board choice is. Oh, he's finless, yeah, bro. So notice, there's, again, it's not throwing. It's pretty sloped. There's not huge amounts of draw off the bottom. We'll go two more. I believe this is Mexico. What do we start seeing about these curves? Those are nice curves. I'm liking the shapes of those curves. I'm getting, I'm getting turned on by those curves. So we can really start to see how it's really starting to draw off the bottom. And because of that, it's starting to stand up. So yeah, he sees this stuff standing up, but I guarantee what he's really looking at are these shapes. Not necessarily, oh, the top is throwing. He's looking at these curves and he's looking at how this water is being pulled up off the bottom. Now, see what I'm seeing? That's a barrel, right? He knows the wave. It's a right-hand point break. It's probably not his first wave. He has familiarity. He has pattern recognition of waves. And he starts seeing curves like, like that's really starting to draw. You can almost see it's kind of sucking down a bit and then pulling back up. He's seeing this. That's a shacking. That's a full tube. That's tube time, bro. So, and what happens? Look at the draw. Look at that energy being pulled. And it's being pulled that, this wave energy is coming in hitting this sandbar, drawing water off the reef, and throwing, throwing. And how, it's still, look at those curves still, right? That's still, he knows what he's getting. Because now it started to kind of fatten out a bit. And he comes out of there. And it's still a nicely powered wave. There's still great curve. That's a powerful, good wave. Boom, this is still a really strong draw. So you're not paying attention. Oh, the top is throwing. No, nah. you're looking at what's the energy doing? What's the curve doing? What are the lines? What is the draw off the reef? Look, and that's still a beautiful line with heaps line by like down the line. Heaps of power, right? Now this is a point break. So it's, it's known what's happening, right? but there might be too much energy down here. And so it might draw up really hard and then shut down his barrel, All right? Cause it's waves, waves are different, but we know it's gonna be a right cause it's a point break. And so we know it's gonna go in this general vicinity or direction. And so he's all looking at what's the draw, what's the rest of the, what's it look like down the line? And he's had enough familiarity, awareness and pattern recognition of waves to be able to see and perceive and then react. So it's still gonna take 10,000 hours of you watching, paying attention to waves, failing, figuring out what closeouts look like, figuring out what barrels look like. Oh, look at that. Oh, I need this in my life. I'm going to Mexico. Oh, these are the type of curves I need in my life at the moment. Uh, I think this is Reef Hazelwood. So it's so clean. Messy waves are harder to read. Right? Clean waves, easier to read. Sandbars are a little trickier, unless they're perfect, than reef. Reef's always the easiest, then you get sandbars, and winds chop, and... So, again, what are we seeing at the bottom? There's a lot of draw happening over here. And it's kind of tapered off this way a bit. So, boom, I reckon he's going this way. Now, mind you, maybe this sandbar might change in an hour or two, and then be fatter, or then hollower, right? That's what it takes you to get familiar with spots but he has the pattern recognition of seeing these curves and knowing that's about. 
because he's looking at this stuff, not looking, oh, this lip's about to, he might see the lip for sure, but you know what this is going to do by looking at what this is all doing. And that, oh, see, look at that draw. That's a way different draw than here. So it's all about learning to read the curves, read the draw, and it's going to take time to figure waves of this is breaking here. Oh, the last couple sets broke out here and went this way. The last couple sets didn't break and they were fat all the way to the inside. Oh, the tide's too high. The tide's not low enough. The sandbar changed. Start becoming an acute observer and pay attention to the lines and the curves. And I have now said curves way too much. So let's wrap that up. Bonus tip, last tip for this video. Sets are coming, right? And you're, fig you're sitting there thinking, oh, I'm about to eat on this thing. You need to determine, is it better for you to try to gun it and get under it or to sit where you are so some of that energy breaks and then dissipates? Because everybody's had at one point, you charge to get under that thing and it just scorpions you right on the back. So you've got to start to figure out Okay, I'm judging this wave. Should, can I get under this thing or should I stay where I am, duck dive it, let some of that energy dissipate? It's kind of this cat and mouse game and you're gonna fail a couple times. But over time, you're gonna learn how to judge a bit more accurately. And then at times you just gotta bail. So there you go, couple tips. Hopefully it helps you in the water. But I really do want you to understand that Stop trying to clickbait hack this process. Most surfers have grown up from childhood onwards interacting with the ocean and observing it. But as their kids, it's just unconscious. You're just playing and interacting, but building mental models where suddenly we have this influx of surfers that haven't ever been involved with the ocean before. So there's no previous learning process, right? So Go at this with the understanding that this is a 10,000 hours process to get really accurate. And it is forever improving, forever learning. So embark upon this with the whole growth mindset. Take these couple of tips and start applying it and start becoming an active observer. Cool, again, join us on a surf trip in the future maybe. Check out surfstrengthcoach.com. Download the Surf Athlete app. Do it, do it. Enjoy your surfing.